Stefan and uh, the rest of the organizers for this nice virtual uh, presence at this workshop. Uh, it's very nice to gather all of us together. Um, okay, so here I'm gonna uh, talk today about the uh, work that I've done uh, in collaboration with Stefan himself and Antoine uh, Sommerhausen uh, recently about embedding uh, the so-called comparison from ingerb boundary condition that have been mentioned actually by Daniel in the last talk uh, in uh, uh, higher derivative gravity in 3D, uh, in particular in TMG. Uh, so uh, anyway, you can just unmute yourself anytime in case you want to ask questions. Uh, I will uh, uh, try to be uh, pedagogical at least in the beginning. So uh, let me start. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, as already stressed by uh, Daniel, uh, gravity in a lower dimension is an interesting play playground to uh, uh, study uh, interesting questions, in particular in two plus one dimension with negative cosmological constant. Uh, gravity is a useful toy model to address questions such as the uh, quantum nature of black holes, um, its uh, reduction to uh, two-dimensional uh, JT gravity could be useful to address the information conundrum. And furthermore, with negative cosmological constant, all the ADS uh, CFT machineries at work, and there are many different boundary conditions studied, and uh, there are therefore many different uh, field theories, uh, uh, CFTs, warp the CFTs, and the various uh, uh, cardiology that one can uh, address. Um, in uh, more or less 15 years ago, uh, Witten uh, asked uh, uh, the question whether uh, pure 3D gravity was a meaningful quantum theory uh, because he showed uh, that in some constant and in some context and later on also with Maloney, uh, it was dual to some external CFTs that has certain pathologies. And soon after actually, uh, Lee uh, Song and Strominger, uh, they propose that topological massive gravity uh, at chiral points could be seen as a putative fully consistent and unitary gravity theory uh, with an extra massive T partition function. They named this theory chiral gravity. And uh, after that, a lot of people, and here I just mentioned some of the uh, names uh, that work on this, um, a lot of people work in trying to understand the uh, uh, developments of these uh, a statement and therefore there have been a lot of work for instance in quantum log gravity in uh, cosmological gravity in quantum tmg and uh, so on and so forth uh, to try to understand whether uh, the statement uh, could be uh, 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 clearly uh, addressed uh, here uh, what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh, present a setup that uh, is also interesting in regard to this question and in particular, I want to stress at, uh, um, that uh, uh, we are dealing here with the gravity theory with the boundary. And therefore, such a theory uh, will be uh, specified by giving its dynamics, its gauge fixing of the bulk metric, and its boundary conditions. And all the three ingredients are, uh, are essential to defining the theory itself. We have seen also before how important are boundary conditions for defining the theory. Uh, once one, two, three dynamics gauge, feature and gauge fixing and boundary condition are specified, uh, then we know the asymptotic symmetries and therefore the features of the dual field theory in the case of uh, at least negative cosmological constant. The historical, uh, is very successful example was considering 3D Einstein gravity with negative cosmological constant, considering Pfeffermann-Graham gauge, although at the epoch it was not, and uh, using the so-called Brown and Obander condition, then the asymptotic symmetry was found to be a double copy of Virasoro uh, that was responsible for the two-dimensional boundary CFTs. What I'm gonna do here uh, in this talk, I'm gonna consider uh, 3D topological massive gravity in uh, the case of negative cosmological constant. This is a theory that put together Einstein gravity with the gravitational John Simons term. Uh, we will see that in the following. Uh, that would specify the dynamics of my theory. I will use Pfeffermann-Graham gauge in the bulk and uh, I, uh, I use this little, uh, uh, I use this moment to just stress that there is recent a very lively discussion whether uh, gauge fixing and a priori gauge uh, fix some uh, 
partial uh, metric components is, uh, uh, is indeed something uh, harmful or not with respect to asymptotic charges. This was also stressed by Daniel uh, before, and there is uh, uh, some literature and actually some work in progress with my collaborators in trying to understand that at least in three dimensions. Okay, so this is gonna be the gauge fixing and uh, three, the boundary conditions I'm gonna use and uh, explain in detail are the so-called compare some song Strominger boundary conditions, CSS for short, and uh, with these boundary conditions, the asymptotic algebra is found to be a semi-direct pro product of Virasoro with a U1 Kax Moody uh, asymptotic algebra. And uh, this algebra is very important actually because first of all, it has been shown uh, eight years ago that uh, uh, it reproduces the symmetries of a two-dimensional so-called warped CFT. Uh, and also this uh, uh, symmetry algebra Algebra is actually present in the near horizon region or of extramal black holes. Okay, so uh, this is the setup, and now I will start uh, uh, constructing one, two, three to then uh, uh, study uh, the endpoint of this uh, construction. Okay, let me uh, very briefly review uh, TMG to begin with, um, for those who are unaware of this theory. So this theory is just uh, uh, the sum of two pieces. The first piece is the actually the uh, Einstein-Hilbert part with the, cos with the lambda, the cosmological constant. And we add to it a Chern-Simons, gravitational Chern-Simons term coupled by a mu, which is the so-called Chern-Simons coupling. Uh, the gravitational Chern-Simons term is given here and uh, it's, uh, it's like for chern simon theory, the famous ADA plus two third AAA term, okay? Uh, as I stress above here, we consider negative cosmological constant and uh, actually one can show that the equation of motion of this theory uh, are the, this one presented here, where G mu nu is the Einstein tensor and the C mu nu is the odd dualized cotton tensor uh, given here. So the covariant derivative of the scouting. Uh, one is uh, readily seen that the uh, Einstein limit is recovered by sending mu to infinity, which therefore decouples the gravitational Chern Simon term. Uh, I, have, I want to make two remarks. The first one is that every solution of Einstein equation is automatically a TMG solution because uh, G mu nu to zero implies C mu nu to zero in 3D. Uh, the contrary, of course, is not true. And uh, also, unlike 3D gravity, actually TMG contains a massive graviton uh, whose energy is proportional to the chern simon coupling. Okay, so there are propagating degrees of freedom in this theory. Uh, this specified the dynamic content of my theory. Now I'm gonna uh, review the boundary conditions I'm going to use. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I will present the Pfeffermann-Graham gauge. Here, rho is the holographic coordinate and uh, the boundary, the conformal boundary is located at rho to infinity. Um, I'm gonna work with uh, x plus minus, the light cone coordinates, and impose the following four loops in the metric. First, the leading piece of, this, of the metric as this shape with a g plus plus different than zero via a periodic chiral function. And the subleading piece of the minus minus is a constant delta. And uh, we will impose that this function will be free to vary, whereas delta will be remain a fixed constant. Okay, and actually in Einstein gravity, uh, compare Songstrom in Gert, solve the full nonlinear solution. And uh, this is the full nonlinear solution uh, in which it appears another, chi another chiral function, L bar. And uh, uh, it is important to remark that there are BTZ black holes in the solution. These are found by setting D plus of P bar equal to zero and L bar equal to a constant. And in that case, delta and delta bar are just the combination giving the BTZ mass and angular momentum. Uh, which can be further more specifi specified to give the ADS vacuum solution. Um, the asymptotic killing vectors that uh, uh, Daniel uh, called uh, boundary conditions preserving transformations in, the for, in, in his first review uh, for this metric can be found and they're given by this expression uh, in which there are two arbitrary functions, eta and sigma, which furthermore they are chiral, function of x plus only. Okay, 
these are the CSS boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, we can compute the charges at least for Einstein uh, here. Uh, so if we specify dynamics, so in the case mu infinity in uh, charges uh, LM and PM, and uh, we can show that the charge algebra is actually a, a semi-direct product of the Vera Soro sector, the L, and the uh, 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 U1 Kax Moody sector minus four times delta. Delta was the constant appearing in the G minus minus uh, two of the metric. And therefore, the first feature that we see, uh, sorry, let me also mention that on the other hand, in the Virasoro sector, the central charge is the famous uh, brown and no central charge. And the, uh, what I want to stress here is that in the um, U1 sector, the level depends actually by delta, by one of the metric field. And one can show actually that this delta is the zero mode for the P charge. So it depends by the zero modes of the charges. And uh, this is a feature uh, that showed that the warp CF T we will consider in the boundary is actually found in the so-called quadratic ensemble, and uh, uh, which is not the canonical ensemble one is used to uh, work with, and is actually brought to the linear or also known as canonical ensemble uh, using a state-dependent asymptotic Killy vector. Um, um, so uh, here comes a, a very important assumptions we're going to make, a very important feature of our construction. We will consider the CSS uh, nonlinear solution, so this line element here, and just embed it into, uh, into TMG. Now, uh, this is an assumption in the sense that uh, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't know the most general solution of uh, uh, comparison Strominger boundary conditions in TMG. This is work in progress. We haven't worked that out. But rather, what we did is take the Einstein sector and embed it into TMG and show uh, how TMG dynamics affects these uh, boundary conditions and nonlinear solution. OK? So uh, I can uh, uh, therefore proceed and compute how the charges are going to be uh, affected by specifying TMG dynamics rather than Einstein dynamics. So here I will use this uh, tilde to uh, this tilde over here to um, refer for to the TMG Luca, charges, we have, whereas we have the a question we have a question by yes. Gaston. You can unmute yourself if you want. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Hi. Hey, hi, Gaston. Hi. Hi, question. Uh, Please. You have this, uh, the algebra general IP is similar to, I mean, it's like the central extension of an abelian algebra, infinite dimensional scale generators as soon as scale kappa. Is uh, non zero. See uh, the, the center line of algebra. It's just for a scale P, and since the, the, the star line is quadratic on the right hand side, there is uh, tension. So, in what sense is meaningful the precise value of this central charge? No C by kappa. Okay. What sense is, I mean, it's just set energy. It's just uh, you can rescale the energy operator, and then you you can get it. You can well, get rid of it. Well, it is it is giving well the, the the explicit value can gives you it's giving you different uh, uh, ensembles, especially if it is a constant or not. But I and I agree that actually what you are saying is what I was mentioning that you can go from this uh, quadratic ensemble here to the linear ensemble if you actually redefine your fields. So no, no, when I say I'm not talking about no, me... going to the quadratic is doing a kind of Suawara thing. This is a non-local transform. This is not a going from one ensemble to another. This is actually a history of the algebra. It's just PM to lambda PM. It's just a redefinition. It's okay. not going from one ensemble to another one. So this yeah, but, I but in that but in that case in that case here what you what you're gonna do you're gonna redefine the charges by the by a zero mode of the charges themselves. We're scaling them only. Yes, exactly. We're scaling them by the zero mode of the charges. It's just saying themselves. that I said energy instead of uh, errors in a 
you know, in some different jewels or something. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is a dimensional, uh, dimensional, uh, dimensional uh, dependent pro process. So I'm not sure that uh, you can really just do it that. I mean, you can you can rescale it for by something that is not a dimension is related to the energy for the U1 sector. So rescaling with this, I I I, I mean, you, I think you can try, but uh, I don't think it's that uh, straightforward. Because this this has dimensions, right? I mean, it's not just rescaling by a, uh, by a constant. And indeed, when you consider the Cas Moody the the central extension, as you say, it doesn't matter the explicit value here. What it matters is just the sign, actually. And indeed, when you bring the, this back to the linear ensemble, to the canonical ensemble, actually, it's a negative sign. So there are some questions about unitarities here that I'm not addressing. Uh, on the other hand, the rescaling using the P0 himself I'm, is a delicate process. I wouldn't be so straightforward in the result. You, you see what I mean? Say this. Uh, into TMG uh, with this full nonlinear solution into TMG, and uh, I will compute charges in TMG. The tilde here it refers refer to the Einstein sector. And I will use uh, the definition of the charges that has been computed in higher world by Bouchard and Clement, whereas they've been computed using the varnish brown formulation by Geoffrey and uh, Stéphane. Uh, the final outcome is this. These are the two charges, and uh, one can show that actually the asymptotic symmetry algebra is unaffected. It's still a semi-direct pro uh, product of Virasoro with U1. However, the explicit value of the charges and the central extensions are affected by the mu uh, trans simons coupling in this specific way. Uh, and uh, importantly, uh, as uh, actually the question of Gaston uh, brought to attention, uh, this one can uh, uh, impose that CR tilde and the Kaxmudi tilde level as the same sign of the Einstein ones, uh, and this restricts the uh, sector of mu uh, trans-simon coupling we will work with. Uh, furthermore, we can perform a field dependent redefinition of the symmetry generators, uh, sigma of the theory, in such a way that we actually decouple the semi-direct product into a direct product of the two sectors. So in uh, this case, uh, once we redefine sigma, uh, we obtain that the Virasoro sector is completely disentangled from the U1 Kasmuti sector, whereas they take the central charges, of course, take the same value. And uh, I want here to stress that this feature, that a U1 sector can be uh, disentangled from a semi-direct product into a direct product, also appeared in a recent work I've done in collaboration with this gentleman. And uh, it actually seems to be a general feature whenever I have a semi-direct product with a U1. Uh, so it is something that I'm trying to understand uh, better. Uh, a priori from the theory under study. Okay, so the final outcome is this. And uh, 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 before uh, going to talk about uh, uh, perturbations of the theory, this theory, I want to just do an intermezzo and uh, talk a, a bit about the entropy, uh, because one of the uh, important uh, uh, features that we have to check is that the boundary uh, counting of the generacy in the field theory is reproducing the right thermodynamic entropy for the bulk. Uh, so uh, if Luca, we... Luca, you have uh, five minutes. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. So if we uh, specify the two horizon R plus minus of the uh, black hole solutions, the entropy is given by this formula, which has been computed by Krauss and Larsen. Uh, and later on by Solodukin. And uh, um, we can show actually by explicit computation that this entropy is uh, uh, actually accounted for uh, by the degeneracy of state in a warp CFT in the quadratic ensemble. 
Uh, and this is the formula for counting the degeneracy of state, the quadratic ensemble in a warp CFT. And by computing it explicitly with, you, with respect to the vacuum being ADS, ADS3, one can show that actually the two entropy uh, are equal. Um, okay, uh, then uh, once this, checked, uh, this check is achieved, we can uh, continue uh, and uh, talk about the reduction to chiral points. Uh, which is the uh, uh, the uh, final outcome, uh, if you want, of this uh, talk. So the punchline is that, as we see in the central charges, uh, uh, which are reported here, depend by the chern simons coupling in a very specific specific way. And uh, uh, actually, the generators themselves of the symmetry depend, um, such that uh, there are two points I can achieve. The first one is mu L equal to minus one. And in this, specific point in the chern simon coupling, the theory reduced uh, completely to a U1, so the Virasoro sector is not there, just because all the Virasoro modes goes to zero at this point, uh, and is the central charge. Uh, and furthermore, we can show that the entropy of BTC black color are accounted for by the U1 sector only. And on the other hand, at mu L equal to one, uh, we have only the Virasoro sector. Now, the Virasoro sector was already studied by uh, Lee Songstrom in Jer, because they were working with Brown and no boundary conditions, so they had a double copy Virasoro. So at both chiral points, they were actually reaching a single copy of Virasoro. Here, the novelty in embedding CSS boundary condition in TMG, uh, our result is that there is a specific point here, mu equal to minus one, where actually the full symmetry, uh, uh, the full symmetry is just a U1. Okay. So, so uh, to summarize, the punchline is that the, we have found the point where the total asymptotic symmetry algebra of 3D TMG with CSS boundary conditions at a specific Chern-Simon coupling point, mu L equal minus one, is a U1 Kaczmudi algebra. The next natural question that I will skip the detail uh, because I'm already <laughs> probably <laughs> out of my time is uh, the stability of this current point. So let me just give you the upshot, the final result. Uh, and the final result is that one can show that these uh, chiral points mu L equal plus one or minus one are actually stable against linear perturbations, uh, uh, linear perturbations uh, around ADS3. Uh, here there is, sorry, a typo, actually. It should be perturbation. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and when I say they are stable, it means that the energies of the spin two perturbation around the DS3 at the two chiral points are semi-definite positive. So are either zero or positive. There is a question about log modes arising uh, that I not touch upon here, but it is interesting for the following. Uh, so let me uh, summarize uh, the results. Uh, so what we have done here is uh, we have studied how uh, CSS boundary conditions uh, can be embedded into uh, topological massive gravity. Uh, we have shown that the entropy uh, match in the, the, the thermodynamic black hole entropy with the uh, warp CFT Cardi formula. And then we have found the two points, mu L equal minus one and mu L equal to plus one in which the symmetry algebra reduces, in particular at mu L equal to minus one, uh, we found a U1 chiral point, which is a consistently new chiral gravity theory. Uh, um, the things to be done are, uh, as we mentioned already during the talk, to study uh, non-Einstein solutions of TMG with CSS boundary condition. Uh, as I also mentioned in the previous slide, is to analyze logarithmic modes at the chiral point. Uh, we can then address the question of the Euclidean path integral at the new uh, U1 chiral point. And uh, finally, we can try to do the analog of this for warped ADS3, ADS solutions uh, uh, in the spirit of finding new possible new boundary conditions. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, are there questions? Thanks very much, Luca. So uh, I think so. Uh... Okay, wait, so we have, maybe we can start with Daniel and then come back at Gaston's question right after. Sure. So. Okay, I just have a brief question. So, um, well, probably you, you can't say because you probably haven't addressed it, but uh, I would be interested in knowing what is the one partition function for critical TMG with CSS boundary conditions in particular, um, well, do, do we get the Virasoro character or a U1 Katsmudi character or more than that? 
Um, so have you any comments on, on, on that? Yeah, well, as, uh, as you already, as you already uh, said, actually, yes, I haven't addressed this question yet. It's, of course, in my to-do list. Uh, I expect that there is going to be something uh, interesting uh, at this uh, mu L equal to minus one point. Uh, because here actually what is happening, and uh, uh, I use the occasion to stress it again, is not only that the central charge of the Virasoro sector takes a zero value, is that actually all the Virasoro modes goes to zero, identically. Because the Virasoro modes has, has actually one plus one over mu L in front. So at this point, I expect actually to see only U1 features. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be an interesting check to see if this is realized uh, uh, in, in this one loop partition function. But, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, sure, for sure. So, okay. so I, I think people have tried, have started to look at these uh, one loop determinant computation with CSS right. boundary. I think Alejandra, Cynthia, and Philip okay. did something some time ago, but I think there was just CSS in Einstein Hilbert. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So in TMG, we would have to do what you did with uh, uh, Vasilevich and... Uh, and so this, and this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, and yeah, exactly, that, that would be very interesting. That, that's exactly yeah. what, we, what we would need to do. But the thing is that I would expect, so we don't really know if there are log, we, we suspect that there will be log modes because we know that there are exact solutions at mu L equals one and minus one that have a log in, in them, or yeah. linear solutions. So we know that there will be linearized modes. Uh, okay, sound is gone, but I will, I will continue. So, uh, so we, we suspect there will be linearized modes at these points, and, but we haven't really, uh, this hasn't really been really written, written up. But, but yeah. then we, we expect indeed that th there would be a similar story as the one that you, uh, you found for log, log boundary conditions. Yes, yes, and the interesting feature here is that in the Einstein sector, in the Einstein theory, you cannot just decouple the Virasoro. Here is really a feature of TMG, right? Having this U1 alone. Yeah, there might be two different sex sectors. We don't, we don't really know. Um, yeah. So, um, I think, so, so Gaston, do you want to come back to your question? Uh, I think. Uh, well, basically, you said that you, you agree. Uh, I, I think I agree, that. yes. Uh, it could be zero plus one or minus one, but somehow we keep it as a, it's like a, keep, you know, a bookkeeping device to set the energy scale. But indeed. Okay, okay. yes. It's just, it's just setting how I am, how I'm, I am measuring the energy. That's exactly, yes, that's yes. Exactly. And it's true as. as that's as, that's as why you as say that changing. Tension with sine of kappa would, would be uh, some unitarity problem because you require exactly. to take the energy and make it non emission anymore. You send p zero to i p zero, yeah. 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 Then you can change the sine of ka of kappa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Yes. So so Jerry is saying that the pn so the pns are dimension full actually. Yeah, yeah. The PNs really are dimension full. They are P zero really is the energy. So P, the P's have energy, have a dimension. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll uh, okay. We'll so so Francesco had a question, and then Rafael, and then we'll we'll maybe continue. Uh, so Francesco, you can unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, look, uh, just uh, maybe a little curiosity. At some point, you mentioned that you do a field uh, uh, dependent uh, redefinition of the gauge parameters. And um, how does it, uh, does it create any subtlety, uh, let's say, in the computation of uh, the asymptotic symmetry algebra? Um, okay. Let's say in uh, the modified graph. And uh, is there maybe another way to introduce uh, this parameter in a more clever way? Maybe I, just a naive question. Okay, no, no, but this, uh, I know what you have in the back of your mind, Francesco, so that's a very good, <laughs> very good question. Yeah, actually, uh, that, that's, that's what I was saying. Uh, uh, um, uh, one of the, part I, don't, I don't understand this on the general level. I mean, I can see it working in specific situations, so I did it with you in this uh, paper, and I did it with Stefan in this other paper, and it's still the same feature. So let me tell you, first of all, that what is changing is actually the generators of the symmetry. This is already something peculiar, that in both cases are the generators of the symmetry that are changing, not something else. Because you may think of changing coordinates, you may think of changing uh, uh, metric fields, 
redefining metric fields. No, here is really the generators in both cases. So uh, what you are asking is if uh, there is some way to define CSS boundary conditions to begin with, such that the algebra is already a direct product. And this is a very yes. interesting question, is how you, would you start with this setup rather than achieve it via field dependent redefinition? Now, I don't have the answer, I haven't tried, but definitely it's something that it is worth uh, trying to do. Because it is always like finding the right directions, essentially, in solution space, such that this decouples. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll take a uh, last question for now from Rafaela and then we will conclude. Uh, thanks. Uh, hi, Luca. So hi, I, was, I was wondering, I mean, so you had the special points mu L equals one and minus one, right? In the end. Yes. So do you have a physical interpretation? I mean, what is, what is happening at these points? Uh, so what does it mean physically? I mean, I noticed in all your formulas, you always have, you know, you know one minus one over mu L. So that's like the technical reason. But yes, uh, well, uh, what is going on uh, uh, physically? Well, I can tell you uh, from the perturbation that, that I actually didn't go into detail, uh, uh, unfortunately. But so what, what is happening if I, if I study perturbations of the ADS3 background, if I want to preserve uh, CSS boundary conditions, I should actually use the subalgebra SL2R right times U1 to study isometries and to classify linear perturbations, okay? So the linear perturbations are no more SL2R right times SL2R left, okay? There is a U1 in the left sector. And uh, uh, what is happening, therefore, is, is then when you study uh, linear perturbations that satisfy the TMG, TMG linear equation of motion uh, in the TT uh, gauge condition, the highest waste condition, the CSS boundary condition, and they have finite energy. So once you put all these requirements into the machine, you end up with three modes. Uh, these are the massive mode, the right graviton, and the right photon, actually, instead of the right graviton again. Okay? So in LSS, when they studied linear perturbation, they have massive mode, right graviton, left graviton. Here, we don't have the left graviton. Okay? So what is happening is that actually when you go to the chiral points, you can see that the energies of the various modes collapse to zero or to positive energy in this way, specifically at mu L equal to one, you have only the right graviton, which is switch on, and switch on, sorry, I meant with positive energy. And at mu L equal to minus one, there is only this uh, photon or so called gravity photon on. So that's why actually physically you, you have this U1 surviving at mu L equal minus one. It's because you have only this gravity photon. I see. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks thank very much. So we can thank uh, Luca virtually or physically again. So bravo. Thanks. And we'll now uh, welcome our next speaker, um, Javier Matulic. Um, so Javier, are you here? Or is... Yes, hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You can share your screen if you wish. And so, yeah, so I will just let you know after 20 minutes that you're, you have five minutes left. And, uh, and again, I, I will let people interrupt you for clarifications and so on. So thanks very much. So we'll have now Javier talking about asymptotic symmetries at spatial infinity. Hello. Hello, thank you for the invitation. Can you see my screen? I'm still 